Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Did you know that a glass full of Horlicks makes a most refreshing summer drink? More and more people are asking for Horlicks malted milk at soda fountains. And many more are making Horlicks at home to serve to their friends and families. Here's cooling refreshment at its very best. And how easy to make. The full cream milk is in Horlicks. And you need add only water to make a nourishing food drink, making it both economical and easy to prepare. All you have to do is to mix a sufficient quantity of powder thoroughly with water or milk using any type of mixer or an ordinary egg beater. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor and mix them up. It's a good idea to keep a pitcher full in the refrigerator, ready for all occasions. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, things are looking rather bad for Lum just now. You know, his picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium, was destroyed by fire last Friday. And although the old fellow thought he was fully protected by fire insurance, he received a letter yesterday from the insurance company informing him he was protected against public liability, property damage, and windstorm, but not fire. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner alone in the Jotham Down store, about to make an announcement over the party line. Listen. Hello? It's his Abner Peabody's got him down so it's talking. Or, uh, it's, uh, Abner talking. Uh, got some special announcements to make on pricing. I'm having a full clearance sale here. Starting early to get ahead of everybody else. Special for this week only, uh, number two wash tub. Regular 50 cent seller for 48 cents. But now, if you want one, you better get here early, for I've just got three of them. And one of them ain't for sale, for I don't want to be clean out or nothing. Extra special for this week, uh, a lady's hat with an ostrich feather on it. One dollar. Uh, that's the one that's been sitting there on the front counter for so long. Well, oh, howdy, howdy. Oh, oh, excuse me, i never seen you talking about Well, howdy, long. <laughs> Sit down, I'll be through here in just a minute. Yeah, sure, so go right in here. I'm just making an announcement over the party line. Uh, Hello? Uh, that was long just come in. Uh, don't forget about the sale. I'm going to run it all week. Everything you see here in the store with a yellow tag on it is on sale. Been marked down in price. I reckon that's all for today. Be sure and listen on the party line for Peabody Special. <laughs> yeah, did I hear you say you're putting on a sale? Yeah, I just happened to think about it and decide to start one. You're going to need some extra help around here. We're going to marking all this stuff down and putting yellow tags on everything, ain't you? Oh, well, I ain't going to put no yellow tags on everything. Oh, I thought I heard you say on the phone just now that you was. Yeah, I know, but... I ain't going to all that bother. Nobody ain't going to buy nothing this time of year, no way. They're all too busy in the field doing the trading. Well, what you putting on a sale for, then? Oh, I don't know. Just something to do. It'll make some of Dick Huddleston's customers stop and wonder anyway. Uh, someone was telling me that Cedric ain't with you no more. Said he quit. Well, he never quit. I fired him. But they're sassing me back in here. Well, uh, you be sort of short-handed around here, won't you? Yeah, I will. I just might not wish I hadn't fired him now. Well, you want to be careful. Abby. You're getting up in years, you know. I wouldn't try to overdo myself. No, no, I'll watch it, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, have you found out anything about your insurance? Yeah, I just got back a while ago from the county seat. Yeah. Don't look like I'm going to get a cent, though. They claim in there that I never had no fire insurance. Well, I do know. Well, I thought that's what you went in there for, to buy every kind of insurance they had. That's what you said you were going to do. Yeah, well, it was my own fault. I ain't got nobody to blame but myself. See, the day I went in there was the day Squire Skimp was suing us in court. Yeah, I know. I recollect you late for the trial, even. Well, I know now how come it overlooked getting the fire insurance. 
Yeah, I was naming over what all kinds we wanted when he stopped to tell me about Squire buying a life insurance policy from him. And whenever he told me that, I know that was evidence it would win the trial first. And oh, uh-huh. I jumped up and run out of there so as to get over to the courthouse before the trial was over. And I must have got so excited I forgot all about the fire insurance. Well, now, that is a shame, that is. He said he called out here several times trying to locate me to ask me about it, but never could get hold of me. Uh, was his name Ralph Hamilton? Yeah, yeah, that's the fella. Well, now, he called out here all right. He he called just a day or two for the fire. I wanted to talk to you, and I told him if you weren't connected with the store here no more. Oh, uh, well, he was telling me the truth then today. I wish he'd went ahead and took out a policy from him. Yeah. Well, I hate it the worst way, Lum. I just hate to stand off and see you lose everything you got that way. Oh, it's cleaned me clean out, Abner. I had a little money in the bank, but I had to pay for them chairs I had rented and pay for the films I had last week and pay off Grandpap and Cedric. Yeah. I've got a dollar and 43 cents left. Well, I do know for the long sake. Right, that's all they are to it, just right now. I've got to find work somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be pretty hard to do, too, I bound you know. Job just pretty scarce around here now. I don't hardly know where to start out to look for one. Figure a little later on in the year, around crop gathering time, I might could get a job picking cotton or something. Yeah, you could do that all right, I reckon. But I've got to have something to do for then. I've got to eat. Yeah. Well, let's see now. There ought to be somebody around here that's needing a hand. Of course, I know the store business better than anything else. Yeah, natural, sure. Don't reckon you know of anybody in the store business that's needing a hand, do you? No, I reckon not. Uh, I thought maybe you might know somebody that's fired the boy that's been helping him or something. No. Uh, have you talked to Dick Huddleston then? Uh, he might be needing somebody. Well, Dick never does hire no outside help, though. He's got his woman there to help him, you know. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Your woman never does help you down here, does she? Oh, no. No, she don't know nothing about working in a store. Besides, she's got all she can see after there on the place. She put in a big crop this year. Oh. Takes up all her time. That just leaves you here in the store by yourself, don't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Now, I just don't see how I'm going to tend to it all by myself, neither. I sure don't. Well, what you need is a good man to help you. Yeah. But now, that's something that's hard to find. Especially somebody you can trust. Yeah. That's one thing I can say for myself is I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, me and you all have trusted one another, didn't we? Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever worry any when you left me and the cash drawer both here by ourselves? Why, no. <laughs> but now, it ain't everybody as honest as you are, neither of them. But I'll find somebody, though, I reckon, give me time. Well, uh... You know, I was telling you a minute ago that I was needing a job. Yeah, well, I'm still trying to think here now. There's bound to be a place for you summer, son. Yeah, think hard. I tell you. Huh? George Hughes over at Cherry Hill. Now, he's doing a big business that store here. Now, he might need some extra help over there, son. Yeah, the trouble is, though, I hate to leave Pine Ridge, have I? Got my place here and everything. Yeah, that's right, too. Sure. Be he better if I could get a job in some store here. Yeah. Well, you might see Dick. He might change his mind and hire somebody. He can't tell. Well, to tell you the truth, Abner, I've done spoke to Dick about it. Tried him. Well, wait a minute here. Huh? <laughs> What's the matter with me, anyway? Huh? Uh, go ahead, Abner. <laughs> What'd you start to say? Oh, swan to goodness, if I ain't a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Never washed in of my mind. <laughs> well, I wondered. <laughs> you, you don't care who you work for, do you? Oh, no, of course not. Well, I've got the very job for you, then. Well, good. When do I go to work? Well, I don't know about that now. I don't even know what he'll pay, but I know he's needing somebody bad. He is? Who are you talking about, anyway? Luke. Luke Spears. He was in here this morning wanting somebody to wash dishes down there at his restaurant. I just promised let it slip my mind, I reckon. You mean you want me to... Start washing dishes for a living? No, Luke's the one that's looking for a dishwasher, not me. Well, can't you think of nobody else that's needing somebody, have you? No. That's Nick Walt Bates. Now, he was hiring some hands last week. He's putting in a logging camp over there near the head of Rock Creek. Logging camp, huh? Yeah, but now, that's pretty hard work that on that logging. I don't know where you could stand up on it or not at your age. Yeah, that's a trouble. That dishwashing is too light a work for me, and I'm... 
Speed logging will be too hard for me. Yeah. Hey, you're just too heavy for light work and too light for heavy work, looks like. I wish there was a store job open for me, Summers. I'm just the right weight for that. Yeah, yeah. I'd dig right in and straighten up the shelves and sweep out and dust and all that stuff. If they're having a sale, I could help mark the sale price on everything, too. Yeah, well, that'd be a heap better than going on a relay. Going on a relay? Yeah, I'd hate to see you have to do that, Bob. Oh, my goodness, I'd take the dishwashing job before I'd do that. And I don't believe you and Luke's wife would ever get along all on. She's awful hard to work for, they tell me. Yeah, I don't know what to do. It's nice that you ain't in my fifth family because you got a family. Yeah. You ought to be awful glad that you got the store instead of the picture show when we unsolve partnership. Oh, my, yes, I should say I am. I reckon <laughs> it don't matter much about me. It does seem funny, though. Here we've been partners all these years. Now you've got a nice store here doing well. Well, I ain't got nothing. Just shows it's a small world after all. Here today, gone tomorrow. You ain't a figuring on leaving, are you? Oh, no. I, I thought you said something about you here today, but you're going to be gone tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no. I don't aim to leave less than I have to. May have to go to the poorhouse where it looks. Over the hill to the poorhouse. Yeah, reckon why they always put them things on the other side of a hill that way. Bad enough for a fella to have to walk on level ground to get to him, much less having to climb clean over a hill. Oh, I hate to think about it. Does look like a shame, man, get up my age, all of being uncommonly big successful, and all of a sudden wake up and find yourself without nothing. A failure. Oh, well, now, I wouldn't call you a failure, Long. Well, I ain't got no job or nothing. Got a dollar and 43 cents in my pocket. Well, Lum, I, I don't want to make you mad by saying it. I, I know or nearly that you ain't going to like the idea of working for me, but I, I'm needing somebody to help me here in the store the worst way. And if you'll consider doing it, why, it'll be a big accommodation for me. Say that again, Adam. Well, now, don't get mad now, Lum. I, mad? I grant you that's what I come over here for. Well, uh, why in the world didn't you say so? I just a bust and asked you, but I said you think I was trying to show off in front of you. You mean you'll give me a job helping you here in the store? Why, sure. Be tickled to death to have you. Hey, right, Granny's, I'm hired. What a come down for the former president and manager of the Jotham Down store. Abner Peabody, proprietor. Lum Edwards, clerk and delivery boy. Before we close, here's a simple, safe reducing plan for overweight people. An effective way to lose excess pounds without discomfort and without resorting to practices of which your doctor might not approve. Just drink a good glass full of Horlicks at noon instead of eating a heavy, hard-to-digest meal. Horlicks, while it is nourishing, energy-giving, and sustaining, doesn't have the heavy meal's excess of calories. Substituting a glass full of Horlicks, then, for a heavy meal amounts to a reduction in your caloric intake with consequent loss of weight. Just how much you lose depends on how rigidly you stick to the plan. In a recent test, women lost on an average more than three and a half pounds in only three weeks. So you can see how effective the plan can be. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist and start the plan right away. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow.